Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is uh, Scott, husband Scott, farmer Scott. I've hijacked the channel just for the first few minutes of this video because Valentine's Day is coming up. So I've got a couple quick tips for all the husbands out there that I think will help you as you're planning something to get your wife for Valentine's Day. So tip number one, know your woman. Some women like fancy cars and diamond rings like the country song goes. Some women like a night out on the town, want to go to a show, dinner, and a movie. Some women like to cuddle up on the couch and watch a movie. Um, know your woman. So if you know Christine, you'll understand why this uh, Valentine's Day gift is appropriate for her. Um, but that's number one, know your woman. Number two is pay attention. More times than not, your woman is going to tell you, your wife or your girlfriend is going to, she's going to talk about what she likes. She's going to mention it. Oh, I'd love to have that. Or wouldn't that be cute in the house? Or man, I really love to have that. So if you're paying attention, she's going to tell you what she wants. Don't, don't think you have to surprise her with something that she's never heard of before. No, no, no. Pay attention. Simple is usually better. And then number three, uh, don't just give her the gift. Like I'll think about what, what else goes with it. So for Christine, I have got her um, some baby chicks. If you know Christine, you know that she's she's the chick lady. She loves them. She loves all animals, but lately she's been into chicks. So I bought from a local hatchery, which we always support local if you can. All right, local's always good. And, but, but you don't just get the chicks, right? You gotta know your woman. And so what I've done here, a tractor supply bucket, because who doesn't love tractor supply? You got the chick food. You gotta have the chick food. And then you've also got the shavings, right? The shavings are super important. And so what we're gonna do, I'm gonna set this up like this. And here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna put a little bit of shavings in the bucket. And here's the thing, Christine is about to come outside. All right, look, so, see? And then we got the food. And now I'm gonna put the chicks in here. And then Christine's about to come outside. She's either going on a horseback ride or something. I'm not 100% sure. So, look, we got these little chicks. We're going to put them in here. And then, I'm going to ah, get away. Get away. We got a cat. Got to be careful with the cat. All right. Now, check it out. See? Some women like fancy Ikea baskets. Uh, some women like wooden farm crate baskets. Christine is a tractor supply woman, so I got these in tractor supply bucket for her. Happy Valentine's Day. Look what I got you. Horse food. Horse food. No, it's not horse food. Look. Oh, my gosh. <gasps> you really did. Hold on. Let me put my saddle. Now, there's actually a lot more. This is only, I think, uh, 10, but there's actually 20. Shut up. There yeah. is not. Where did you get them from? Did you get them from Claudia? Yes, I did. Babies. Oh my goodness. Ooh. Did you name them yet? No, I'm gonna let you take <laughs> care of that. Hi, darlings. I guess we gotta get the brooder set up. Oh my gosh. Can I see the other ones? Yeah, they're okay. inside. Okay. I'll leave this here. I'll come back. I can ride later. Oh, one more thing. I forgot. <laughs> Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> woman loves her coffee. That is good. Now, sweet. I just got a bunch of random breeds from Claudia. She told okay. me what they were, but I don't know what they mean. So oh. why don't you tell us? Oh, looks like a box of chocolates. <laughs> Who knows what's in there? Okay, yes, I will come. Can I change? It's so hot.
So we got the brooder all set up and ready to go. He brought it in from the barn for me and I got it all set up with the shavings and their food and their water. It's nice to have a lot of stuff on hand, but it always helps that he had fresh food ready to go. If you will notice, that was not medicated food. And I have another video on that. You can read up here some of the mistakes that people make when they're first raising chicks. But anyway, 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 I wanna tell you what he got me. So I looked through the little list of what he got me and it's mostly rainbow eggers. Some people will call them Easter eggers. And I have a few silkies in there as well. I am a sucker for the silkies. But this is a great opportunity to actually talk about what an Easter egger or a rainbow egger is. At the risk of way oversimplifying this, an Easter egger is simply um, the offspring of a hen and a rooster that donated two different egg colors into the gene pool. For example, an Americana, which will always give a blue egg gene, and a dark copper moran, a black copper moran, which is a very chocolatey brown egg. Those two, um, when they are mixed together, the offspring of those, when it grows up and starts to lay its own egg, is going to be a really beautiful green. And those are our olive eggers. This will be an F1 olive egger. If you want to reliably get the same color eggs um, from, from crossing this rooster with this hand, your first generation is going to be the most reliable that you get because we are keeping the gene pool rather refined. It really helps me to remember that every rooster and every hen does not just carry one color of gene, one, one color in its DNA that it's gonna be donating to the baby um, because we get genetics from our mom and dad. And so a purebred heritage at like an Americana is going to have a blue egg copy of uh, from its mom and from its dad. My apologies, that footage that I filmed got corrupted in post and I could not recover it. So we're gonna try this again. Let's roll things back just a little bit to make sure that I've clarified everything as much as I can. And I'm not a scientist and I don't understand the Punnett square as much as I would like to when it comes to understanding genetics and how we're getting there. But I do think that this is simple enough for even somebody like me to understand. And basically, there are two genetic colors that we can get from chickens. That is white and blue. And blue is the dominant color. And I know you're thinking, but where do the brown colors come from for chicken eggs? Well, those are technically a white egg that is covered by a brown allele. That brown covering, which is the allele, is also dominant. And so that's why when you get a, a, a blue uh, egg layer crossed with a brown egg layer, you're still getting a blue egg that's been covered by that brown allele. And that's why you're getting green. And I know it's hard to believe somebody on the internet. So why don't you take a look at this olive egger that just hatched. Take a look at the inside of this shell. That is a blue shell. Look at the contrast between the white of this incubator and the blue that is inside here. So this was a blue dominant gene that was covered by that brown allele. And contrast that with this Americana that's just hatched. That is a blue shell through and through. Some of this white membrane is still left over from where she hatched. And we have blue and blue through and through. Let's see if I can hold them up together. It's hard to film with just one hand. Oh, contrast that with this brown egg right here. And what do we have in the inside? We have white. So that is proving that we have white shells and we have blue shells. Those are our two dominant colors and that this brown, that is an allele that's covering it. And then again, with our olive egg or blue egg that's been covered by a brown allele and that's what's giving us green. Isn't that just fascinating? By the way, it's not really 104 in there. <laughs> That's the accurate temperature inside right there. 99. Boy, this is a messy incubator. <laughs> in this situation, the more you keep breeding and the more you keep diversifying that gene pool, the more of a chance that you're going to get a diversity of colors rather than a tried and true 100%, you're always gonna get a green egg, always gonna get a blue egg. I learned something really interesting in all of this uh, research that I did in order to make this sound a little bit intelligent um, was something called back crossing. Now back crossing is when you're gonna, remember let's go back to the basics and we have our dark copper moran and our um, Americana and we're gonna get our F1 olive egger. That beautiful olive egg. Some breeders are really interested in getting the darker mossier colored green eggs and so what they're doing is breeding it back to another dark copper moran black copper moran. And that is not an F2 olive egger. That is a back crossed olive egger. So what they've done is they've crossed it back to another set of genetics that's already in there. Preferably not a full brother or a full sister because we're going to have 
um, some depressive gene pool going on there. That's as far as my understanding <laughs> of the Punnett square goes when it comes to ch chicken genetics and getting the egg colors that we want. But if I were you and you're wanting to start off with a bunch of fun, if you're raising your own chicks, if you're incubating, hatching, and seeing a second and third generations coming across, I recommend that you have an Americana um, as your rooster and then have several different breeds of chickens that have white eggs, pink eggs, your Orpingtons are the way to go for those because they're not only a beautiful docile friendly breed, um, but they are very hardy and they lay like this creamy pinkish egg. And then you could have your Easter Eggers just understanding that with the Easter Egger, you're not getting two copies of the same gene. You're getting, um, you're getting a little bit of a mix in the gene pool there because an Easter Egger was made from a different set of genetics, not the same set of genetics. So that's all for today's video. I hate that I had to refilm it all because I think it sounded better the first time and I hope that this made sense to you. Before we go, I asked a lot of people in this beautiful Facebook group, um, the North Carolina Chicken Keepers, to show me pictures of their Easter Eggers, their rainbow Eggers, and they obliged with the most beautiful pictures. So without further ado, here are some photos, some inspiration for you. If you're curious, if you're on the fence about getting started with backyard breeding and understanding chicken genetics, um, here, this I think will inspire you. Mm -hmm.